just before lunch, um, we were on your committee, Andrew, which is... Thank you. Item 11, page 113. Andrew Turner moves and seconded by Glenn. Item 1. Okay, so this is the um, status update on the um, social housing rebuild. Um, essentially receiving the information. Have we got staff for any um, questions on this? Great. Um, in 2.3, in 2.3, um, the accommodation type breakdown of 445 closed units inclusive of the red zone units. Um, we've got the um, red zone broken out there. In fact, no, that's fine. That's, that's there where it needs to be, so that's, that's all good. Um, the one thing that's missing from this report is where there may have been some targets that have been set in the past and how we're performing uh, against those targets. So whilst it's encouraging to see this work going on, um, and it's good that we're gaining some traction here, um, it would be good to know what targets had been previously set or what targets we're working against now so that we can measure um, our achievement against those targets. Um, and I'm not sure whether that, in fact, was the case in the past. Glenn may have some comment on this um, from the, the work the previous Housing Committee had done. But I'm, I'm just keen to put the good work that we're seeing here in the report in the context of um, what's targeted and what we're expecting to achieve over a, over a period. Uh, yeah, if you, in terms of a response to that, so um, in next month's report, which you'll hear um, next week, the CHED Committee, um, there's targets for the new build sides against what was agreed at the point of approving those new builds and, and what we're currently forecasting as completion dates. Um, with respect to the repairs program, um, we had targets for the initial work package one that we reported against and that was for the last year's calendar year. Um, for this year we hadn't actually allocated, we hadn't allocated targets to that because um, we hadn't had a, um, from our side we haven't got a an approved um, or hadn't had an approved strategy of what repairs we were doing. So we've only just recently got that in terms of the focus on closed unit repairs um, and the, the next month's report that you have has, a, has more detail around those closed unit repair side on it. So this will all be taken into account of in the report that's coming to next week's committee meeting? Yeah, probably um, we will refine it on the closed unit repair side in terms of timeframes and that. We're, we're getting greater detail around that side of it. Um, we have refined it next month's report with respect to the new build side and that, so we've given you targets around that and how we're performing on that. So All right, that's, that's good. Thing. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm aware uh, with our work streams, those in fact are the work packages for each calendar year have in fact, or calendar, financial year, yep. uh, have actually in fact been our, our targets as such, but I think what Andrew's asking for is to just drill down. My question is about once that um, the Earthquake Commission settlement comes through, how will that change our ability to progress our closed unit repairs? Because every month we have the, um, you know, the explanation there. Uh, since that was worked on, that's had to be uh, the joint assessment programs had to be suspended. So once that settlement comes through, can you describe how that actually? changes the game for us? Um, yeah, look, um, probably the, the largest one, it will have um, an impact around the, the delegation side at the moment. Um, as you're currently aware, we're, we're looking at the last, a delegation requires us to look at what the last assessment is by the insurer and what the current costs are to repair it. And if it's outside a limit, then we've got to bring a council report back to you folks, which takes sort of a you know, six to eight week process so once we get that payout, that global settlement, we should hopefully be able to modify those delegations and that will actually help us speed up the process. But currently at the moment, we're, we're still um, going full steam ahead and with respect to getting 
the, you know, the complete repair damage assessments done for those closed unit repairs, so there's nothing slowing us down at all yeah, at that, the current that, time. That seems quite reasonable to me. You can't break delegations. You've got to come back. That entails the report mm -hmm. system, takes time, but once we get that global settlement, we can actually... So we're just yep. waiting on EQC to... And, it, and it's, yeah, exactly. And at that time, we will, you know, we're, we're doing all the engineering work behind the scenes and that to build those business cases up. So yeah. nothing, everything is progressing as fast as we can possibly progress it with the resources okay. that we've got. Yeah, thank you. Chair, uh, two questions. The first one, I remember last time the, in the uh, uh, committee meeting, I emphasised, uh, you know, the 3.1 and also the 4.1, this kind of the figure a little bit different regarding to each the stream. Like stream one on page 114, here the shutdown is 127, uh, but 205, close. But on page 115 is 127. There's a difference. I just want to know when you will be the, uh, you know, the, to be the clarified. You're correct already. I've now corrected you? that in, in the report that you'll see next month, so I've, I've got those um, references. Uh, but actually, so 4.1 is correct, am I right? The table one is correct. Or oh, so 3.1 is correct. I just want to be confirmed. Looks like 4.1 close unit status, that's correct figure. Am I right? Yeah, the, the stream numbers, sorry, in, um, in 4.1, one uh, are, are, are incorrect if you look at the, the first part, the actual numbers of closed units. So to just to clarify, in the, um, in the partnership program, the, the units that we've identified, um, we've got 127 units, closed units, that we identified that we wanted to look at early replacement of those before the earthquakes. Yes. It, the remainder of those closed units, excluding the red zone ones, makes up that two, 205 number. So those are the ones that we're looking at. So. And those numbers are correct in terms of, you know, in the partnership program, we, we think there's actually, oh, we believe there's eight units within that program that we consider are economic to repair. Yes. And we're actually going ahead um, with, with four of those at Boyd Cottages already, and it's the same with the 67 that we've identified in there. So those numbers are actually correct. It's just the, um, the actual stream numbers that we referenced to um, didn't align with the, um, the work streams that we defined in um, Section 3.1. Okay, thank you. Second question is 3.3 .3 regarding to five packages. I just want to know the package one has been done already. Package two is the 61, the numbers. But how about package three to package five? Uh, do we have any the uh, forecast or estimate how many for each of them? <coughs> We, we do behind the scenes, um, and that's basically subject to the, um, the prioritisation process and the asset strategies that are coming through from the housing unit. So we're, we're working very closely with them, um, and there's a report coming through next month that will clarify that prioritisation that you will decide on, um, very similar to what you've done for the community facilities. By the end of uh, June 2017, all the all the um, remaining of the 205 closed units are reported. Okay, I have next, Yanni. I just wanted to check on um, the ones at Knightbridge Lane. What was the original time frame for completion of those new unit builds? So at Knightsbridge Lane, um, we had at the point of council approval, we had said by June 2014 we would have those units open. Um, the current forecast date is February 2015. So what, I'm just trying to understand why the delay. Yep, um, there's a, a couple of things there. It, it took us, um, to be honest, it took us th three months to resolve the contract tags around, um, around that, that process. And so we ended up with a, a, a pure delay due to the actual signing of the contract with that one, with the contractor. Is there any sort of lessons or anything that we can do to kind of learn from what's happened? I know we're going out for design and build, so we, we've already got a really quite short process around um, getting them done. But, you know, I presume um, the ones... 
Uh, yes, very much so, and we've actually incorporated those lessons learned into the subsequent ones. Um, on those, those first two developments, Morris Carter Courts and Knightsbridge Lane, um, we started off with a real blank canvas um, in terms of going out to those contractors and asking what they could do with configurations and layouts. Um, what we've done now is work very closely with the urban design panel and nail down how we think the actual layouts of those should, should look and how they fit into the, the existing space and that kind of stuff. So really what we're doing now is we've got a slicker process in terms of going out to those contractors and they're really putting forward a proposal based on a known layout that works and, and really looking at materials and sort of the internal designs of those units. So it's a much cut down scope. Yep. Can I just raise a point of order on that? Yeah, that question's been asked several times at committee level. OK, point of process, I mean, that's been raised several, there's no need to... Well, some of my questions have been asked, but I guess um, what it's... If, if, in fact, the tables we had were kind of like in one spreadsheet, I think I would understand them better if it was a special in A3. But what, in terms of them adding up, and, and I'm no longer on the, on the committee, as you know, so... Um, it's here that we see it, but I'm just not sure why um, it looks like the one of the main reasons you're putting forward, besides consultation with existing tenants, and also that existing tenants need to be found other accommodation while they're being fixed, why in fact more haven't been fixed, because uh, given that some of some insurance money has already been received. Uh, yep, we've um, looked the. Um the short answer basically is um, the team has committed a huge amount of resource to working with EQC to actually quantify the claim um, over the current over the current year. In fact, since we started back in July of last year, so that's we've taken resource off doing actual repairs to quantify work through the whole portfolio. Whereas previous to that, we were working through on a complex by complex basis and fixing as we went. So um, you know that's been one of the factors that's um, contributed to that. There's been there's resource shortages out there in terms of engineering, uh, you know, availability of engineering resources, um, particularly when we're looking at closed unit stuff with structural damage. Um, it all takes time, really. Probably, probably asking the, um, the wrong people. We've, we've done our bit. And, um, no, very soon, yeah. we're hoping. Yeah. Yeah. OK, can I come to part A? Um, anything on part A? Any comments? If not, it's moved by uh, Councillors Turner and, <laughs> Turner and Livingston. Um, I'll put that. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, carried. It's just receiving the report anyway. Part B, whole of Part B. Any discussion? If not, uh, move the report as a whole be adopted, and that's moved by Andrew and seconded by Glenn. Put that. Those in favour, please say aye. Those opposed, carried. The next 